Hello everyone, this is Christian from Global Reach, and today we're talking about enhanced measurement on Google Analytics 4. So this video will cover what it is, where to find it, how to set it up, and how to use it. So you should have everything you need to know uh, to master enhanced measurement. So I'll start with the basics. So basically Google Analytics 4 or Google Analytics has the ability to measure certain things out of the box. So like the, the users or sessions or engagement rates, those are things that Google Analytics 4 can measure right away. And in the past, uh, for other things, so if you want to do scroll tracking, if you wanted to look at video plays and, and video watch times, those were things where you need to use a different software like uh, Google Tag Manager to actually measure in Google Analytics 4. So you can still use Google Tag Manager to do a lot of cool things, but enhanced measurements are basically introduced uh, to help you learn more about your website without using Google Tag Manager. So certain things that you couldn't do in the past, like scroll tracking and video tracking, that's now available in Google Analytics and lets you do that without having to use Google Tag Manager. So let's jump into Google Analytics 4 and I'll show you exactly where to find enhanced management and how to turn it on and basically what you need to know about it. So let's jump over. Okay, so welcome to our Google Analytics 4 property. So for the enhanced measurement part of it, this is going to be under the data stream section. So enhanced measurement is turned on and is located under the data streams settings. So I'm gonna go over to the bottom left section and click on admin. And once I'm in the admin section, I'm gonna look under data collection and modification. And then I'll click on the first option, which is data streams. And I'm gonna click on the only active data stream that I have. If you have more than one data stream, you need to activate this per data stream. Uh, but since I only have one, I'm gonna click on my singular data stream. And this is where you find enhanced measurement. It's under um, events, and this is where you'll find it. And you have the option to toggle it on and off. So I'm gonna learn more about this and click on this gear icon here. And this gear icon says configure enhanced measurement. So I'm gonna click on it. And this is basically what enhanced measurement takes care of or brings to the table for your property. So you have page views here, which is just enabled by default. And then you have a bunch of other ones. You have scrolls, outbound clicks, site search, form interactions, video engagement, and file downloads. So uh, starting from scrolls, I can break this down and talk about um, how this works. So the first event here, scrolls, basically captures the event of a scroll whenever someone reaches the bottom of your web page. So when a user goes to your website and scrolls to the bottom of your page, this scroll event is then detected and sent to Google Analytics 4. One thing I will say is that if you're already tracking scrolling on Google Tag Manager, I would just go ahead and deactivate it for enhanced measurement because you don't need two scroll variables. But if you haven't set up scrolling at all, then this is a good tool to just have activated because it's just good to go back in and, and look at it from time to time. So that is scroll tracking. Uh, for this one here, uh, the second variable here is outbound clicks. So this is, this basically measures whenever someone clicks on a link that leads them away from your website. So if you have a bunch of different links that lead to different websites, uh, this will track whenever a user clicks on an outbound click. Um, you know, typically with digital marketing, inbound clicks are a little more valuable, you know, internal linking takes you to different parts of the website. But just for this variable, it looks at outbound clicks and leaving the website. The third variable here looks at site search. So site search basically measures whenever someone interacts with the search functionality on your website. So if someone uses the search bar uh, and searches for something, this event gets sent to Google Analytics. Uh, one confusion here is that this event doesn't actually send through the search term. So if you wanna actually know what people are searching for on your website, you'll need to use Google Tag Manager to learn about that. Uh, but generally, site search just tells you how many times people have used the, uh, the search feature on your website. So um, if you click on the show advanced settings here on your website, or on Google Analytics, what you'll see here is that you can specify 10 parameters uh, for Google to recognize a search. So whenever someone makes a search on your website, if the URL says uh, query or search or S or Q or keyword, this is when Google will recognize it as a search event and it will send that event through. 
If your website doesn't have any of these terms, what you can do is you can just add the search term or add that term uh, in the URL to this box here, and then you can talk about, um, you know, from there you can talk about um, the number of search events. So that is how you would define um, the search parameter. Okay, and moving on to the next event here, this is form interactions. So this looks at whenever someone interacts with some sort of contact form or some sort of form that you fill out on your website, this sends two events over. This sends uh, form, form start and form submission. So if somebody starts your form and doesn't submit it, uh, it gets sent through as um, uh, one variable. And if someone submits it, it, get, it gets sent through as another variable. One thing to know here is that um, this is kind of hit and miss for different forms and different types of websites. So highly recommend that you test this out and actually verify that your results are legit before you start using it as concrete data. So if you have access to the back side of your website or the back end of your website, you'll be able to verify how accurate the form interaction variables are. But under enhanced management, that option is there for you to activate if you want that. Next up here, we have video engagement. So this actually is pretty interesting. This looks at the um, certain video specific metrics on your website. So if you have a YouTube and video um, embedded on your website, what you can do is you can capture certain metrics about pausing and playing and watch times. This is something you can do in Google Tag Manager uh, and you can get a lot of information from Google Tag Manager. So it is really cool to see this being sort of automated on Google Analytics 4. So this video engagement feature is something you can um, activate if you want. Um, like I said earlier, it's always good to activate and look at that data and look at how it's coming through and verifying its legitimacy uh, because results will always vary based on the type of videos you have or the type of website you're using. So really depends on the functionalities there, but that option is there for you to use if you want to. And lastly here, the last variable for enhanced measurement is file downloads. So this basically looks at um, whenever a file download event is triggered in your website. And this is basically done um, whenever a user clicks on a link with a document or a compressed file or something like that. Um, again, this is something that's really cool. It's really informative, but it's also important to fact check and verify that it is working as you expect and that it is measuring um, in a legit way. So. That option is there, but I always recommend verifying it and double checking. So if you want, what you can do is you can activate the events that you want, or you can just activate all the events and hit save. In this case, we've activated everything except for scrolls because we already had scroll tracking enabled. I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And now let's talk about where to find the events in Google Analytics 4. Okay, so we are back here at our home page. I'm gonna talk about um, once you've activated the enhanced measurement, where you can actually find those variables and find that data. So what you wanna do is you wanna go over to the report section. And once you are in the report section, you want to navigate down to the events tab. So under engagement, you wanna click on events. And here is where you will find all of the events. So as you can see, I have 11 events in total. I'm gonna to click uh, 25 just to show all of the events. So what this looks like is it basically sends through events based on the enhanced measurements that you have activated. But the confusing thing or the tricky thing is that the name of the events may not um, reflect the name of the enhanced measurement specifically. So let's talk about what event means what. All right, starting with the first one, uh, it says page view. Uh, this is pretty simple. The page view is under the page view event. So that is a pretty simple one. Uh, another one is going to be for scroll. So when you activate scroll tracking on enhanced measurement, it will come through as an event called scroll and you can click on it and look at it from there. For outbound clicks, what's gonna be different is it's just gonna be called click, but if you look at it um, or if you click on it, it takes you to a dedicated page and from there, you'll be able to look at um, what kind of outbound click it was. If it was outbound, you can click on this and here outbound just means true so what i can see here is that i have received one outbound click so that is how you would look at outbound clicks it's a little bit of a two-step process to get to but that is how you find outbound clicks 
for the site search parameter, it's going to come through as view search results. So this is just the number, the event count is basically just the number of times that uh, someone has used the search functionality on our website. So it says here total users, so that means that 29 users have, have triggered the search event 58 times. So that's how you would interpret this table. For the video variable, I, we don't have any videos on our website, so we don't have that coming through. But generally, if you did have videos and you did have people interacting with those videos, the three variables you should see are video start, video progress, and video complete. Next, for the file download event, it will just come through as file underscore download. Uh, we don't have that on our event list, which means we probably don't have any downloadable files on the website, so this event is not coming through. Uh, but it will come through as file underscore download. And lastly, for form interactions, like I said earlier, it should come through as form start and form submit. And like I said earlier, uh, form start is when a user begins to fill out a form, and form submit is when the form is actually submitted. And like I said, different websites work in different ways, especially for submission forms. So make sure that your events here are lining up with what you're seeing on your website. So highly recommend that you are doing that. Um, so once you've activated the enhanced measurement, what you want to do is give it a couple of days and let the data come through and just verify that it looks good and verify that it's working. And once you've done that, and once you've done the proper verifications, you will be able to have all of this data at your fingertips without having to do any sort of external intervention or use a different platform. It's all here in-house on Google Analytics 4. So I hope this tutorial on enhanced measurement was helpful. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and feel free to watch any other tutorials on our page.